I think the best one we could talk about is K-State last year. I mean, <laughs> foul. Uh, every single game. <laughs> now I'm getting targeted. Dad used to tell me all the time. He used to tell me all the time. Son, don't worry about the mules. Just load the wagon. What's up, guys? Welcome to Rock Chalk Unplugged with Chris Tia. And today, my guest, walk-on star, passing the torch to him right now, coming in, hitting threes at the end of the game, Michael Jankovic. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing great. Pleasure to be here, Chris. Hey, appreciate that. All right, let's just jump right into things. Jank, you come from a long line of basketball. Your dad obviously coached the SMU, a bunch of different places, coached with Coach Self for a while. What was, what was it like having a basketball coach as a dad? Honestly, it was kind of weird. So, I mean, there was kind of two sides to our relationship. You know, I mean, obviously he's my father. And so he's, I mean, he's always going to be there for me. But at the end of the day, you know, I played basketball my whole life too. <laughs> so, I mean... He would jump me a couple of times. I remember some car rides back from some tournaments, you know, oh, yeah. not always the most pleasant things, but I mean, I think, you know, in the long run, it was good for me. And, you know, being where I am today, I think that's, you know, that he's one of the main reasons that I, I'm here. So, yeah. And I'm sure, I mean, my dad was a basketball player growing up, coached my teams when I was younger and we had some brutal car rides. Absolutely. Um, the car rides are not always <laughs> fun to look forward to. You know, hopefully sometimes it was mom taking me home after the, some of the games. So <laughs> Yeah, your your little 11-year-old self went one for five in the game with two points and you're just like dreading the car ride Oh, home. we've been there, yeah. Just praying to God I can get some food on the way home Yeah, or after, after your dad just loses a heartbreak or two, you're like, yeah. oh, I'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I didn't even take that into account, you know. I mean, he had his own stuff going on too, so he probably let some of that go on me after some of my games, but... yeah. He had to keep his he had to keep his guys at his university happy. He didn't care about you. Like exactly, you, were, you couldn't yeah. transfer. I know. Leave. I couldn't do anything. <laughs> he was so. the one putting the food on the table. I, w- I was stuck. But so talk about how you got to Kansas. Obviously, you, your dad, and Coach Self had a relationship for a long time. He, Jankovic was on uh, was on the staff in 0- 07 or like- yeah. So we moved here. We moved to Lawrence in 2003. Okay. And so I kind of grew up here in preschool and elementary school here. And so, I mean, I've known Coach Self pretty much my whole life. And so we moved in 2007, right before the national championship, yeah. unfortunately. But, I mean, we ran it back when I got here. So can't yeah. complain too much. But, uh, yeah, so we moved after that and, you know, went through high school. I mean, got recruited a little bit to some smaller D1s. But, you know, just didn't really want to end up doing that. And so I took my prep year. Uh, in Massachusetts. And so, you know, I'm coming down to the wire. This is May before I got to decide <laughs> where I'm going. And Coach Self hits me up and he's like, hey, we got a spot open for you. Do you want to come? And I'm like, I mean, that's a pretty tough offer to pass up yeah. on. You know. Oh, I yeah. Mean, I mean, that's know. the same so, situation I was in. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, thought about it for maybe... 10 minutes and I was like, yeah, let's do it. I mean, why not? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, decided to come to Lawrence and haven't looked back since. Yeah. That was, I mean, that's, I had a little bit more, I had did it a little bit earlier than you did, but yeah, I got that call in like October and he was like, Hey, just think about it for a second. I was like, yeah, I'd probably thought about it for a full 10 minutes before being like, I don't care. It would have, it would have taken an NBA contract to pass up. I know, and I mean, I remember, you know, too, I mean, coming to the games as a little kid, like, that's all you can think of. It's like, wow, I want to be on that court, like, be a part of something special. And so it was really hard to pass up on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And it's something that people don't know about, too, is that my brother Connor was recruited here by your dad. Yes. He uh, he obviously liked slow white guys. Yeah. <laughs> I could shoot the ball. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, he bred one, so I mean... <laughs> All right, so let's move on to this year's team. Obviously, a lot of people talk about last year. We won the national championship, and expectations are high. People think that there's going to be a national championship hangover. I don't feel like that's the mood, seeing the games that we've played. Obviously, we've had a couple tough matchups and stuff like that. It's early in the season. What do you think, like, the morale and, like, kind of the thoughts around the team? Like, there isn't a hangover from the national championship, is there? No, not at all. I mean, we still have a couple of key pieces from that team, you know, especially Jalen and Dewan, them being probably the main two. But, I mean, and we've just tried to, the returners especially have kind of tried to, you know, just get the new guys on board and kind of get them to understand, you know, how to win. And, I mean, we also have guys that are stepping up this year that maybe didn't have as big of a role last year. Like, I mean, Joe, Zach, you think Bobby, like all those guys. And so, 
like we're just kind of trying to get everyone integrated and then it's still so early so it's yeah. i mean it's we're gonna go through some growing pains this year we know that we did last year too oh, so yeah. yeah a couple growing pains <laughs> but you know we're just kind of trying to get everybody on board and we really believe that we have a chance to run it back Oh yeah, for sure. And yours is yours is guard play has been great this year. Um, Och- I mean, Jay Will's taking that approach like Ochai did last year. He yeah, was absolutely. A, Jay Will absolutely. was a great player last year for sure. But there's a step he's taken. What have you noticed in his game? Because like when we watched Ochai lot, like we you played with him your first two years, and then last year he came in, and it was just a whole different beast of the way he worked, the way like he walked into the gym. What are some different things you've noticed with him that's created so much success? Absolutely, I think Ochai really set the tone for Jalen. I mean, you think about the gap that Ochai took uh, from the previous year to last year. I mean, it was it was unbelievable just the way he approached things, his work ethic, you know, his leadership. Um, and I think Jay Will has become that for us this year. And, you know, I mean, he's off to a great start. And, I mean, he's obviously got the same dreams and aspirations. And so, I mean, I think he's on the right track. Yeah, and Kansas, you've been around you've been around Kansas for so long. That is kind of how it works. Like you have guys like Frank Mason who come back and then you have a guy who's like kind of underneath them like Devontae Graham. And Devontae sees what Frank does and what how much everyone right. loved him that right. he comes back. I think that Ochai doing this, doing what he did last year and coming back helped Jay Will. And I think that Jay Will doing this will help another guy come back and this that's the kind of stuff that absolutely, stepping absolutely. stones throughout Kansas. Yeah. Cause if you look at it too, I mean there's there's been some one and dones, like you know that, but I mean, you know, most of the guys that have had success have been here for, you know, a few years. And so they've kind of grown into, you know, and bought into the Kansas culture and, you know, came in and improved and so, I mean, I think it's great, and I think it's great to see Jay Will doing the same thing. Yeah, for sure. So, let's go. Let's talk about the Bahamas. Obviously, not the outcome you guys wanted. Right. Um, I went to Maui one year. That was a crazy experience. I saw the Snapchat stories and all the stuff in the Bahamas. <laughs> what, like, what, can, what would you describe that trip as? You know, those trips are always just so interesting because, I mean, the environment as a whole, like, it, it doesn't feel like college basketball. You know, you're – we were walking through the hotel on the way to the game. Like you have to walk through the <laughs> lobby in the casino. And so it's like, it's very different environment than coming and playing here, just playing a regular away game. And so, I mean, and you're on the beach too. It's 80 degrees and you want to be outside and on the beach and whatever. But I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's a business trip. And so, you know, you don't get that much time, yeah. especially while we're playing games to go out and do stuff. But uh, you just got to take it serious. And then, I mean, obviously after, you know, if we would have won, especially, we would have had had a fun time. Had a but, good old time. Yeah. But we actually ended up getting stranded there. Our, we had some flight difficulties. So we stayed there another night and got to hang out. And so, I mean, we had a good time that night. And the flight dif- the flight difficulties never, ever happen at Kansas. Oh, you never, never. You never, never get stranded. You never have plane issues. No. I didn't even know there were plane issues till I got to Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of issues we've had has been unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I've talked about it with Mitch. I've talked about it with Jay Will. You were on the flight, too. I mean, the engine goes. It's like, I never didn't enjoy flying until... Not at all. Flight cancellations. <laughs> I mean, all. staying extra nights in New York. Motel 6, I mean... Oh, I forgot about the Motel 6. Oh, we, my God. <laughs> I don't know if it was actually Motel 6, but it was it, it was bar- borderline. It had barbed wire borderline around the... Borderline Motel 6. Wire, yeah. barbed wire around the fence on the outside <laughs> of the hotel in, like, the middle of Brooklyn, and you're just like... All right, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, but we made it out, so we're all right. Yeah, and I'm sure you could pick a lot worse places to stay in than... Yeah, the, the Bahamas. Bahamas. It was hard to complain about staying in the Bahamas an extra night, you know. Yeah, but after a hard loss, always. So in the Bahamas, you guys, do you guys play in a hotel lobby or like not a lot, like a ballroom? Yeah, so it was it was kind of a weird setup. So we were staying in one hotel, and it was like, I think it's all kind of one resort, and so it's like a ten minute walk, but it's all indoors. Like you go through the casino and like through convention centers and everything, and like it's a pretty nice setup though. I saw some other tournaments that didn't have anything quite like what we had. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's just kind of weird. You know, you're walking through, you're seeing people gambling on the tables and stuff, and you're trying to lock in and get ready for a game. And But it was a good setup, and we had a lot of fans that traveled with us, so that was pretty cool. We had a decent environment in there, and, you know, some of the other teams did as well. So it was kind of yeah. like one of those, like a conference tournament or NCAA tournament environment. Mm-hmm. You know, you got both sides in there. But 
it was a lot of fun. I mean, I love the Thanksgiving tournaments, getting to travel. Yeah, those are always great. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And that means, so we'll talk about the games now, not just the setup. Obviously, Bahamas is dope. Didn't, didn't end up the way you guys wanted to, but that Wisconsin game and the Tennessee game, those are two games that you play these, you play these Thanksgiving tournaments to prepare you for those little four-day four trips in the NCAA tournament and conference tournaments. Right. That Wisconsin game was a gritty it was a March win, to be very honest with you. I Absolutely. Mean, what was the score? Absolutely. Like 56 to 55 or something Absolutely. like that? It was low scoring. But, um, you know, and those are the games that we love to win. Yeah. I mean, you know, you've been around it. And so, you know, we played good in the first half and then came out second half. Wisconsin, you know, they made a run. And so at that point, you know, around the 12-minute mark, we knew it was going to be a game. And so... You know, we always talk about last four minutes and yep. the players have to make plays. And so obviously Bobby made a huge one. Huge play. Huge play at the end of the game to win it for us. And so that was probably one of the craziest endings that I've been around since oh. I've been at KU. And oh, yeah. So, yeah. And to do it in the Bahamas to get to the championship was pretty special. Yeah. And those last, I mean, Wisconsin, the way we match up against Wisconsin is awful compared to the way we played it like this year. You guys are all up and down. You guys want to get out and transition, push it, run teams out of the gym. And Wisconsin is one of those teams where it's like, we won't even send anybody to the offensive glass. We're going to get six people yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make their own yeah. bench back. <laughs> let's stop them and make them use every ounce of the shot clock. They're just going to pretty much just be like, all right, let's control the pace of the game. Yeah, and they do the same thing offensively. So oh it's just God. like you got to sit down and guard for 30 seconds because they're comfortable shooting the ball with three seconds left on the shot clock. So... You know, yeah. it was not our style of play, but it was great to get one of those wins because you're going to see that in March. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, I, my personal opinion, I hate watching Big Ten anything because their football Absolute. teams play it's like that. It's all the that. same. Oh, it's all God. the same. They just play that little, like, all right, let's just see how long we can get. See how ugly we can make the game. <laughs> yeah, how boring yeah. can we get before the other team just yeah. find, like, okay, I just, you guys have it. I mean, Wisconsin football is the same way. Yeah. Iowa football, it's literally like watching paint dry. I know. It's hard to watch. Yeah. But at least that game had an exciting end to it. Yeah. The last five minutes of that game, I mean, I was sitting there. I'm Crazy. obviously at my grandparents' house. Like, this is my first year not doing it. I'm at my grandparents' house about to get ready to eat Thanksgiving food or whatever. Just watching us, like, not hand the game away, but, like, I know. just sit it there. It was slipping away for oh, sure. But slipping. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was hot. And then uh, you guys play Tennessee, and Tennessee is another very tough matchup. Our our big play hasn't been great this year, and they play two bigs. I mean, really three. I think yeah. they're three mans, like six, seven. Yeah, they had a lot of size. And they run this. They run that little Rick Barnes offense. If you guys have been watching Kansas basketball forever, you know at Texas, they just run those little, like, down screen dribble handoffs, curl around the post, like stuff like that. And that, that was just a bad matchup for us. Yeah, I think so too. And, you know, I mean, especially our starters, like they played a lot of minutes that weekend. And so I think, you know, fatigue might have set in a little bit. But, I mean, you know, we never use that as an excuse. But, I mean, they had a lot of size and they guarded pretty well. I mean, that game was pretty ugly too, God, especially for us on disgusting. offense. But, I mean, it's good for us to have those kind of games because – at, towards the end of the year, we're going to have those also, especially in Big 12. I mean, we're going to have some of those games on the road and we're going to have to grind one out. And so I think it was good for everyone to at least see like kind of what those games are about. And yeah. so we can kind of prepare for those a little bit more. Yeah, and I think I'm looking at it. It's like they have a team. They have an odd team. Like they have a very large lineup. They remind me a lot of the USC team we lost to in 2020. Yeah. The COVID year. And um that was some, that's an experience we didn't have that year. So when we ran into USC, it was just like running into a, a like a buzzsaw. Right. So that's probably a good experience to have playing against those guys where they play just pretty much, yeah, we're going to stick a 6'9 guy at the top of the key against your four man, and then we're just going to shoot whatever and just have him just yeah. rent to the yeah. basket. Uh -huh. And, I mean, defensively, too, they were good. They have a lot of length, a lot of size. And, you know, I mean, they guard the whole shot clock. And so – I think we had trouble scoring against them. We did, shots didn't fall, obviously, but you know yeah. that's part of it. Even when that happens, you still got to find a way to win. And so I think that was good for us to have that early in the season, you know, before Big Twelve play starts, so we yeah. can figure that out. And Co I mean, I'm, I know Coach Self loved that. You guys are still in the part of the yeah. season until <clears throat> until really about January. This is when you're practicing three hours a day, and Coach is really yeah. <laughs> getting on you guys. Like those games to him, like they matter. He wants to win those tournaments. There's no doubt. He likes to win every single game. If he could go undefeated, he could. But that was a great teaching point, I felt like, for him because I mean the way we've played since then has improved a ton. Absolutely. I mean we came out against Texas Southern. I think that was like 
the day after we got back because after yeah. our flight got canceled, so we had to stay there an extra night. And so I think we played that Monday. And I mean, we came out and whatever. We took, we took care of business. And then, you know, against Eaton Hall, we took care of business again. And so, you know, we're really prepping up for Mizzou this week, ready to go for that one. Yeah, and that, that, uh, that's a matchup. I mean, obviously the Mizzou-Kansas rivalry is absolutely unreal. And the football, stuff happening with the football team right now may add a little bit more to it. You have obviously their head coach kind of throwing shots at us in interviews. There's rumors going around they didn't want to play us in football. Uh, how much, I mean, don't give me any bullets and board material here, but how much is that kind of like resonating with you guys being like, all right, we got to go in there and really, you want to win that game, but you really want to take care of business. What, like, what's the kind of demeanor and stuff in the locker room about that? Absolutely. I think it was kind of similar last year. I mean, last year we knew, because it was the first game in however many years yeah. that we played them. And so, you know, we were kind of itching for that game. Like we had that game circled on our calendar oh, yeah. for sure. And so, you know, we've, we kind of started talking about it a little bit, but I mean, we had about 10 days off between our last game and that game. So we, we haven't been preparing for it the entire time, but, you know, as it starts to inch closer and closer, we're definitely, we're definitely marking that on our calendar. And so, you know, especially with Dewan, him being from Columbia. Yeah. yeah. Had to add that in there. Him being from Columbia. I mean, we know he's going to be motivated, especially this week getting everybody ready. And so, you know, we want to go in there and take care of business for sure. Yeah. And that will be, I, I went to the last Kansas Mizzou game at Mizzou, the last one that was played. Um, and that, that's a tough environment to play in. I mean, obviously, it's a rivalry game, so, like, everyone's yeah. it's going to be tough regardless. But that place gets rocking. You got the antlers in there screaming stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's usually – it's really out of pocket a lot of the time. Like, they did the – I was there. They did the no mom Tom thing when Thomas <laughs> Robinson's mom died, which is just Sheesh. like – I just remember sitting there. I'm, like, 10 years old. Just being like, God, these guys are terrible. <laughs> yeah. No, because I remember even when my dad was coaching here and, like, we would have games over there, they wouldn't let me go. Oh. You know, just as a kid, they would not let me go to those games just because of how bad it was yeah yeah and so and you get I mean, you we're definitely away. excited to go yeah. over there and you got away with a lot more stuff back then like yeah. now like you have so much social media like if they did the no mom tom thing like they would whole university make it canceled yeah for that. it was gonna be bad so but, it'll, it'll be a little bit more late yeah back. so i think this will be actually be my first time going there i don't even know if i've ever been to columbia so Good. going over there and playing there in that environment's gonna be awesome yeah that'll be that'll be a fun matchup but that's obviously one that uh I remember seeing us schedule it, and we were supposed to play in the sprint center the first year. Right. Obviously didn't happen, but I really, really wanted to go to Mizzou. Yeah, that is, that's yeah. Legit. it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't even think the sprint center would have done it justice, honestly. So oh, no. it's got it's got to be either here or there for it to be fun, like yeah. it's going to be. You I mean, you love the 50-50 crowds. Like when you play, you guys played Wisconsin, they had a great fan base there right. in Bahamas. And like when you played in Maui against Dayton, they had a great fan base. But the 50-50 is not as fun as like just being all one hole. And like, right, this one's this one's a little bit more personal. So I think we got to yeah. have it one way or another. And and that and if you win those games. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, everyone asks you, like, what are your favorite, like, what are your favorite games when you love winning those close games at home? It's like, no. You love no. going on the road and literally having, like, your little maybe 20 parents there and then the whole arena is just sitting there hating you. Yeah. And you walk out with the win and as you're walking out, everyone's yelling at you, just defeated. You're just like. I think the best one we could talk about is K-State last year. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think that was the one of the craziest games ever. I mean, we had a lot of good ones last year, yeah. but I think that one went a little bit more, especially with Coach Self's dad. Yeah. And you know, I mean, they were up what at halftime? I mean, they were what, what were we what were we down? 16? It was like fifteen or yeah, fifteen or sixteen. Something I was going like to say that. eighteen, but that was North Carolina. Either way, we come back from a lot of things. A lot of them, year. and we're walking back in the locker room, and we're just like, oh my gosh! And you know, everyone's. All the football All the team. State, yeah, the football team's in the tunnel, you know, they're saying whatever. And so, you know, coming out of there with a win, I think that was that was definitely one of the highlights of last year for and, me. And we were disrespectful leaving there. Like, oh, absolutely. We as we should have been, though. <laughs> yeah. As we should have been, I though. mean, the football team's sitting there, like, like, flipping us off and all this other stuff. And, I mean... Yeah, I had, a, I had a friend on the football team, yeah. one of my lifelong friends. I'd text him after the game and be like, hey, we appreciated that. Yeah. Like, we really loved that. And then we got the freedom. I mean, I was waving goodbye at yeah. everybody. <laughs> I didn't play, so. That was me neither, so. <laughs> <laughs> I knew whatever. That, that was an awesome game, though. And so, you know, I kind of hope we're going into this Saturday, you know, with the same mindset of, like, 
you know, we need to take care of business there. And I mean, you know, tensions are going to get high for sure while we're in there. So yeah. if we can come out of there with a win, you know, I think, I think we'll have a lot of fun after that. Oh one. yeah. And I forgot, I mean, I forget that Juan's from there too. And he, uh, I don't know if he got recruited or not by them, but you guys are gonna have a chipper on your shoulder. For Absolutely. That one. that one's gonna Absolutely. Be one. It's going to be a lot of fun. So last year, obviously, I was me and you were both at the end of the end of the bench, guys, coming at the very end, throw up a shot. I mean, you know how that feels. Absolutely. This year, you're you're hitting you're hitting at a pretty good clip. Yeah, I think two for three, maybe yeah. two for three. I mean, hey, all you gotta say is I'm shooting sixty seven. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that sounds a lot better. You don't have to say anything about how many you made. <laughs> probably leading the team in percentage at least. Oh, easily. You may lead the country in percentage. <laughs> There's probably someone out there who shot one and made one. Yeah, but, but yeah, you're up there. I'm a volume guy, so I mean No, no, not a volume guy. <laughs> not a volume guy. But what like so I know I got in the games and I always like they want you to shoot the ball. Everyone wants you to shoot the ball. But you I mean you've been sitting down for two hours. Yeah. And it's not warm in there, especially if you're playing an hour. No. They open yeah. those doors with like the those last doors four. right by the tunnel. You know, you can feel the cold, especially, you know, in late November, December. You're like, oh, oh my gosh, and, can I get a jacket in here? And or they something? open them right when you're about to go <laughs> in. Because so you're like trying to get there, get warm, and like get ready. And then you're like, oh God, I'm freezing. <laughs> you're like, can I get a blanket or something? <laughs> your hands are your hands are sweaty, but cold at the same <laughs> time. So like I remember I would get in and I'd like kind of run to the sideline. I always loved being on defense first because then you kind of got like a player. Yeah, right. And I would touch the ball once and immediately get out of my hands fast. I can't like pass yeah. it. Like, all right, I got my next touch. The next one's going up. Absolutely. <laughs> I remember we always talked about that. You know, you got to get, you know, your one little possession in. Yeah, hopefully it's on defense first. But yeah. if you're coming in straight on offense, you know, you hope you get one little touch and, you know, get rid of it get just to feel the hands. ball. You haven't felt a ball in a couple hours. Oh, so you're, my God. <laughs> so you kind of forget what it feels like. And then, so, you know, I mean, if you've got any sort of space on the next touch, it's going up for sure. It doesn't even really matter about no. space. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it might get tipped, but it's all right. It's got to go up. If it gets tipped, it looks a lot better. Like, hey, if it gets tipped and then you airball, it's like, yeah. okay. Like, I get, yeah. it got tipped, man. Yeah. Come on. I remember going in and hating, like, getting the ball the first time and hating being open. Being I know, like, but oh. you have to. You know you have to. You have to yeah. shoot it. You're like, I honestly couldn't tell you if I was from 50 feet away or from 5 feet away right now. Like, I shoot it. It goes up in the air, and I'm like, that, sh that could be short. That could be no, long. No, that's I know. And I mean, we're both pretty good shooters, but, you know, oh, yeah. when you take that one after sitting down for two hours, you're like, I honestly have no idea. Well, like, and in front of 60,000 yeah. people. It's not even yeah. like I've been sitting down. It's a little bit of everything. It's a combination of all the factors, but you're in there and you're like, I don't really know. Like, it might feel good. It doesn't really, I don't, who knows? No idea. But, yeah. I mean, I remember shooting the one against Mizzou and being like, God, that's like five feet short. Yeah. <laughs> you see it go through the net and you're like, all right, well. Yeah. Muscle memory, I guess. Yeah. What like so? What's your like? My, I already told you my routine. Like, do you have that same one, or I should just like? Yeah, I kind of have a similar one this year, especially now that we don't have any other guards because it used to be both of us. Yeah. And now it's just me and Dylan out there, and so I mean, he doesn't really need to get a touch. He's gonna score in the paint, but I mean, <laughs> I, I got to shoot it from a little farther out at least. So you know, I try to get in and get at least a little bit of rhythm in there and get the get a feel for the ball, you know, yeah. but if there's a little bit of space, you know, I mean, it's got to go up, you know, it has to. It's got to go up. And everyone, I don't know if ever, I haven't been to a game yet, but they're probably putting your face on the watch to jank time now. <laughs> I go crazy. Yeah. There's been a call since I've been at work or like I coach a little basketball team. I'll be at the basketball practice, get home. It'll be like four minutes left and I'll be like, we're up 25. All yeah. right, I'm watching. I'm watching Dill and Jank. Yep. And Dill does a really good job of getting in the stat sheet. Not for good reasons. He gets a foul, foul every, every single time. game, <laughs> but he gets in it. Foul every time. But I mean, if that's how you got to get on, you got to do it, you know? Oh, I mean, absolutely. There was a couple games I put up nothing but a turnover. I got on the box score. <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> that was like in high school when you're a little freshman yeah. and you like check the paper the next day and be like, Chris Tehan, one minute. <laughs> <laughs> one minute, 0 for 1, <laughs> one turnover. One foul. foul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know this especially too. When you get in, you haven't been in for. 39 minutes and you know they're coming to attack you on defense first possession they get a chance oh, to i mean they saw so. they saw me i had the mullet the mustache <laughs> ankle braces on pale as paper <laughs> you already know what's happening the guy gets the ball his eyes literally get wide and you're like 
All right. Yeah. At least when it was both of us, there was a 50-50 shot. Now I'm getting targeted. So. Oh, yeah, targeted. And I would always hate, they'd be like, they'd run the play and they would, I would like, you do the scouting report and sometimes they leave the starters in. And yeah. Like, I think one year I was guarding, um, I can't even, I, it was someone for Texas and it was like a decent, I think it may have been Andrew Jones or something. <laughs> they were like one with Andrew and I'm like. <laughs> I know what that means. <laughs> yeah, I know what that means. <laughs> they get the ball at the top of the key. Everybody goes flat. And I'm like. All right. I think, uh, I can't, this, I don't think this was a Seton Hall game. It might've been the Texas Southern game. Uh, I think I got in with probably a couple minutes left and I'm by the, I'm by the bench and they're like, run play 20. And I'm like, there's no way you guys have a play 20. <laughs> I'm not that stupid. I know that's my number. <laughs> and so, you know, they dribble a the handoff a couple of times. I get the switch and I'm like, all right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. And Just so, look at his waist. Look at his waist. <laughs> and I'm like, here we go. And so got the stop. And so I'm like, that's all that matters. But, you know, it's funny when you're in there and you're like, God, this is funny as hell, though. Yeah. Like, no one else can hear that. But you're, yeah. literally, you're literally sitting there and you just hear the bench <laughs> say something. And you're like, try not and to pay like, attention to it. And you're like, all right, I know it's coming. Yep. Here I go. I'm yeah. about to be put on an island. And I mean, obviously, like, I didn't play at Kansas for a reason. And that reason was because of stuff yeah, exactly. like that. <laughs> exactly. And they were dead right. Like, exactly. They had, and, and, and if I saw myself on the court, I would have been like, all right, make that guy go. Exactly. Do you guys have a weird combination of people coming in at the end of the game? So like you said me, me and you were in the last year, and then you had like Bobby and Joe. And, yeah. And so now, I mean, last Seton Hall, it was what you, Zach, Dylan, Zuby, and Ernest. Yeah. So we, were, we were running the one out four in offense. <laughs> what, who, were and, you a point guard? And you know, I haven't played much point guard, especially not here. I mean, probably played about 5% in high school. And I mean, that was five years ago. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny because, I mean, I, I was looking at the scores table and there's like three big guys about ready to check in. And so I was like, who's about to stay in with I'm me? About, yeah, I'm about to go out. Come on yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, I mean, there's probably a couple guards in there with me and I'm like, okay, who's staying in with me, you know? And I look at Coach Self, he goes, yeah, you got four bigs, you're running the point. And I was like... <laughs> I mean, okay, Thanks. we'll we'll see what happens with this one. You know, usually someone else is supposed to get the shot for me. And so I didn't get a shot up that game, but, you oh, know, yeah. it was pretty funny. It was like, you know, yeah, figure it out. And yeah, so figure was, it out. That's, that's my favorite. I was like, okay. I was like, all right, here we go, I guess. And I'm sure they were loving it. Too. Oh, they like, loved that, it. They were all dying on the bench. Oh, that's one of those. Yeah. You come in the locker room after and KT, like, kind of, like, rips you for no reason. You're like, <laughs> How would yeah. you not come off the ball screen right there and find the lob on yeah. that side? Like, I can't dribble yeah. a basketball, KT. Come on now. No, it was pretty funny, though. And Coach Self kind of did the same thing after the game. He's like, he's like, why can't you get a shot up on these guys? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I think you know the reason to that one. Yeah, that, that was something. Like, I did a better job of it as, as I got older and, like, kind of understood that they were messing with me. Yeah. But, like, yeah, my little – when I was a freshman, like, you'd come out of the game and Coach Self be like, why didn't you shoot that? Why didn't you shot fake that one and go punch it on? Yeah. And I'm like, coach, like, I can't, I can't do yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> I remember senior. something like that happened to me freshman year. Uh, I remember I, I didn't shoot one. It was, I mean, I was probably like five feet behind the line and I didn't shoot it. And we come back in the locker room. He's like, he's like, why don't you shoot the ball anymore? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, I mean, I was pretty deep. And then, and then now I'm to the point where I'm like, it's probably honestly going up, but. Yeah. If not, you know, it's just like, who cares? I know he's oh. messing with me. Yeah, that, you, just, you just look yeah. back at him and like <laughs> you, you just chirp him back kind yeah. of. And he laughs yeah. and he's like, ha We'll just like have it. a joke out of yeah. it. Yeah. That's always better than like, oh, my dude. Yeah. Like, I would get, he'd come rip my ass a lot. Yeah. After a game, I'd be like, oh, yeah. I do. I know, especially as a freshman, you know, you just, you're kind of trying to figure everything out. But yeah, first, I remember that. Ga yeah. first game in Allen, too, you're just like, yeah, shaking your hands. Shaking, yeah, and then you get you get ripped after you get a locker for not shooting. It. You're like, I don't even remember being out there. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like I couldn't tell you what happened on any of the plays. Out there, <laughs> I yeah. couldn't see. I couldn't feel my legs. <laughs> honestly, like, I didn't even know where I was. <laughs> no like, idea. Yeah, you'd be called four game our motion offense, and I ran L down. Like yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. I forgot our offense. The whole offense. Oh yeah, yeah it's pretty the, funny though. The, those the, those early games were rough, especially yeah. if they make it for it rough for you. But so, so let's talk. You obviously have weird lineups going into the games, but then in practice, you have a red team. Yeah. And this year, you guys play a lot of different guys. Like, there's a lot of different combinations. There's not really many red shirts. There's not any red shirts. No red shirts this year. And the guys that are usually, like, I mean, we could we could play 12, 13 guys. Yeah. And those last three or four are hurt. 
So, like, what do you guys run? Like, who's your scout team? Who's your red team? Yeah, so last year, you know, it was us two. Uh, I'm trying to even think now. Kyle Cam. Kyle Cam. Dill. Yeah, and, Dylan. And Chucko. Yeah, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I mean, we had some sort of combinations between that lineup. And then, so now, because we had two red shirts last year. Yeah. So now we have zero. Mm -hmm. So those two spots are gone. So now it's down to me and Dylan. Charlie's hurt. Wilder's hurt now yep. this year. And so we're running with three manager lineup right now. <laughs> and so it's honestly been pretty good for what you would expect. Yeah. You know, I mean, Pat can play a little bit. Oh, Pat can play. Yeah. And Pat's he's, fast. He's good. Yeah, he's good. He can shoot it. So, you know, it's us and then Davis. And then the <laughs> Davis, who, I mean, he's eating a McChicken before Scout every day. So I can't say anything <laughs> about that. I mean, I was walking into practice, two, two hot and spicy McChickens, <laughs> add cheese with a bang. And that's how I got through practice every day my senior year. At least you're not 230, though, you know? Yeah. So. I mean, I got up there. <laughs> <laughs> road to 210. Oh, I got it. Well, we, I mean, were, we were well past that Oh, yeah. One. We were on the road yeah. to 210, and I wasn't telling anybody. I was wearing it at, like, 215 <laughs> every single day. Just like, oh, yeah. God. The Red Rocket diet was getting serious, you know, come I took, late February and March. I took 10. I took 10 years off my life last year, probably. <laughs> Easily. Between Easily. After, after the national championship. Easily. And all the McChickens and bang interviews <laughs> I drank before yeah. practice. <laughs> yeah, that and the C4s, the dry oh, scoop, the smelling salts. The smelling salts. Those were my favorite before the game. Yeah. I still, I still have that bottle. Probably not the most healthy habits, but, you know. Oh, no. I mean, there'd be games that, like, we would do it. Obviously, we all had, like, a routine. Like, we had the little smelly salts. You'd, I had, like, the little bottle of them, so you just open the bottle <coughs> and just, like, s like, take a smell real quick. I mean, football players do it, but they always had, like, the little cracks. Yeah. And so we, we had those at one point, too. We had those at one point, but the bottle were a <laughs> We've done everything, easier. yeah. We had the, the fresh new bottle. The bottle was, that was different. Different. We would, yeah. before, like, so you go out. NBA shoot, and then you go out and do, like, the little, like, you go shoot again, come back to the locker room, talk, and then you go out for, like, the last, what, like, four or five minutes yeah. and shoot layup lines. Yeah. And so we do our before we went out, and you got a fresh bottle. Yeah. You'd hit that. I'd be crying. It's, yeah. Like, literally it's hard falling. to breathe for a second after that. Yeah, your nose is running. Yeah. You're crying, coming out, <laughs> running out. I think last year or two years ago we did them. I jumped to, like, touch the little... Uh, little like top part of the tunnel yeah. and jump straight into the bottom <laughs> of the tunnel and split my head open <laughs> on the top of my head. Yeah, you got to be careful for sure. Oh, yeah. They're dangerous. They're oh, dangerous. They were a good time. Yeah. And you forgot to mention the go go juice, too. Oh, the go go juice. We <laughs> Those are stops in a bottle. Shout out Ramsey for that one. <laughs> Shout out Ramsey. The fruit punch go go juice. Those, dude, I actually like looked forward to those every single game. Yeah. And then we started was, dry scooping them, and they just it it did it lost kind no, of the taste. It was just, I know, but you know it's whatever you got to do to get ready. You yeah, know? and those caffeine crashes after the game. <laughs> were yeah, god awful. they were real. They were something serious. Oh, that's another thing. Like going into the end of the game after drinking like four hundred <laughs> milligrams of caffeine before the game. Yeah, and really. haven't had anything during. Oh, nothing. No, during. nothing. I would, no, I would steep. So I would sneak the PB and J's at halftime. You like two of them at half. You have to though. Just soak it up. I mean, I'd be sitting on the edge of the bench, like <laughs> literally like this, shaking. Yeah, I haven't eaten in like five hours. You're oh, like, no. yeah, the caffeine's definitely running through the system. Oh yeah, it, I, there's actually like thinking back on it, there's one thing I kind of like miss a decent amount from Kansas, and you'll realize it more because you're a walk on and not really play as much. Yeah. But like those pregame hotel meals, if you hit a good one with the steak and the chicken oh my and the gosh. spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> That's where it got dangerous. All the travel meals and stuff. I mean, you know, it's all you can eat. So, I mean. All you can eat. And you're not going to work out that day. So, oh, no. <laughs> so you've got to actually watch what you're eating. At least it's somewhat decently healthy. But, I mean, I remember towards the end of the year, especially because we made the run. So, I mean, yeah. we're eating in the hotels all the time. All the time. Yeah. And, you know, we're getting fed three, four times a day. And so we're... It? Yeah, it's like four times. Yeah. And so you're putting in a lot more than you're losing for yeah. sure. Well, and then you just go sit in a hotel yeah. and it's like you get that, you get like a snack at 10 o'clock at night. And it's... And like, it's always something good. Yeah, it's, it's always like something good. Burgers, mac and cheese, <laughs> chicken tenders, uh, just a whole thing of like cheese, like just like the melted queso cheese. Yeah. So some of the concoctions... It's, are, 
like their walk-ons and stuff would make. <laughs> It'd be like, you know, burger stuff with mac uh, with mac and cheese on top, covered in cheese sauce. <laughs> we definitely got creative with them. Oh, and then you had the ice cream yeah. bar after. <laughs> we definitely got creative with them. I still them. think about that. Yeah. But talking back with the red team, like you said, you have three managers on the team. Yeah. How do those guys hold up? I know there's a couple times, like we talked about Davis. And uh, sorry, Davis, for telling the story about <laughs> The pregame last year at Baylor. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even think I saw what happened. I just remember after. Was that the one at the high school? Yes. Yeah, or whatever. Is so. Yeah, I remember after, and KT is giving him so much shit. It was so funny. He's, he's da- so, Dave lit him up on the screen. I think. Oh, lit like. If he, we're, like you guard, so you guard all the offensive actions before games at the pregame. And so Davis was guarding and we ran, I can't remember what play it was. It may have been like down or something like that. Yeah. And Dave came up to set a screen, probably got there a little late. And the guy and Jay Will or Ochai came up the screen early. Dave hadn't set yet and just like took Davis out. <laughs> Lit him up. And the whole, like the whole rest of the time, it's probably like 25 <laughs> minutes left. Davis is just running around the court like... <laughs> Arm dangling. <laughs> I think he like separated something. Oh no, he separated his shoulder. He literally separated his shoulder <laughs> and like wouldn't tell anybody. So he was just like running, and like just, playing defense the rest of the time, like this. <laughs> and KT, you know how he is. He's gonna give him so much crap the whole time. He's like, "Why are you running like that?" You know. Yeah. Yeah, that's having a good. It's old pretty time funny. With it. Yeah. And but, so he's back for a year or two on the scout team, though. So yeah, I'm sure he's enjoying that. Yeah, and then yeah, we've got. Our fifth spot's pretty much open. We'd, it's day to day of whoever's going to be in our fifth <laughs> spot. So I mean, I miss the days when you had uh, during COVID. We had Case and uh, Bashard out there playing. Yeah, I was hurt. I was part of the issue, so I had yeah, to, you were. Part Shard of the was issue. the one that took my spot, but and Case was, <laughs> was hooking yeah, people. I know, which is crazy. I mean, he's what thirty five six. I don't know. At the time, yeah, yeah, yeah probably something like so, that, but. Yeah, but then that's he probably, loved it, and he loved it. And it's probably good for you that you have all, the, like, the managers and Dylan mm-hmm. on the scout teams. I remember there would be days where, like, we would have, like, what you said, like, a makeshift scout team. They'd be yeah. like, all right, Chris, yeah. go ahead, shoot the ball 60 times And today. that's pretty much what it is every time now. Yeah. So I've got about as green of a light as you can have right now. Oh, so yeah. fun. <laughs> it is fun. It is fun. Yeah. Especially, especially when you're having a hot night and you're – you're out there and you're like you're hot night talking shit to all the guys. It's a lot of fun. And you're having so much fun with it. And then like you're also getting in trouble for doing it. Yeah. Like you're sitting there like there. I mean, I think there was one year. Coach made us come back for, for practice later in the night because the red team was going yeah. so crazy. And obviously the red team's like all hyped and all that stuff. They're like, wait, we had to come we back. We have to for come it. back too, though. <laughs> yeah, do the whole thing yeah. again. We don't get rewarded for this. We're no. punished. But also at the same time, it's worth it. You know, I oh, mean, yeah. yeah, 100% worth it. 100% and so, yeah. worth it. And I mean, you know, it helps It helps the guys out too. So it's it's good. But there definitely are those times where you're like, I mean, we're on our third third hour of practice. Like, yeah. do I want to miss this one just to, you know. But you're, you're on fire that Yeah, <laughs> hard to miss on those days. No, yeah, I mean, that, that's your, I mean, that's our Super Bowl. I remember going into practice some days and like hitting the first two and being like, yeah. oh, this is something yep. I'll tell here my go. grandkids here about we go. right here. <laughs> Here we go. Not much more to get excited about. No. <laughs> it is fun some days, though. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I we did I did it for five years, and now you're kind of the, you're the head of the scout team. Yeah. And you're the one going out there every single day and getting those guys right. T- just tell people, like, how how much does that play into, like, your everyday, everyday thoughts, but also, like, you play a big role on the team. I don't think a lot of people realize that. Yeah, you know, because it's kind of behind the scenes. And so, like, I mean, we got to go in and learn, like, all the other teams' plays a few days before the games. And so, like, we run those actions and we do, like, kind of whatever personnel that team has, we kind of have to, you know, kind of mimic that. And so, yeah, like, right now, I get to be whoever the best player is and gets to shoot the most shots. So it's a lot of fun. But, like, it really does get the whole team ready because, I mean, we run that. We'll run that for, you know, up to 45 minutes some days if oh, yeah. if they can't guard it. So, you know, we'll, I mean, and we'll stay in there until we get it right. And so, yeah, it's just, it's one of those things where, you know, you kind of got to just embrace it and 
kind of do it. But in the process, it's a lot of fun also. Oh, yeah, it's a ton of fun. And obviously, like, you have weeks where it's great where you'll play a team that shoots a thousand threes. And then you guys didn't really have to scout Tennessee for a while, but... Yeah. Like if you had to scout a team like Tennessee, they're making Jank the four man, the six seven four man, yeah. being like, "All right, he's super athletic. He, <laughs> he plays great defense. He dunks everything." Yeah. So some of those guys are hard to mimic, especially with our lineup that we got on our team. But oh yeah, yeah. But thankfully, we only had about you know twenty hours to prepare for them, so we didn't have to run through much of their stuff. But yeah. you know, sometimes the matchups are favorable in other ways. Oh yeah. Well, you were here when West Virginia had Culver and Oscar, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. And so the Culver and Oscar, I mean, you have the two, like, pretty much the most dominant, physically dominant bigs in yeah. America. <laughs> and then they're having, like, me or Jank run. And the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Oscar Sheboy for a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so you don't get to shoot many shots, and then you're not having a fun week for sure. Oh, and then they're and you're yelling having at to you. Yeah, you're have to post up everybody the whole time and, you know. They're getting yeah. mad at you if you don't get an offensive rebound on Coach Dave. Rob, yeah. Coach Rob Scott. Yeah. Like, You're not giving him the look. And it's like, yeah. okay, I caught the ball with my back to the basket. Yeah. And they're mad because you're not rebounding on Dave. Like, yeah. It's so, it's, it is one of those things where you got to hope you have somebody that kind of matches what you do so you can at least go out there and play. But yeah. And we play, we play a very, we play a very, uh, yeah, <laughs> a very white person style play right absolutely. here. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, not much variety in our games, but yeah. Okay, so let's move away from the basketball court, but like nil. So nil came into came into fruition last year, kind yep. of. It was it was definitely in the learning stages. I remember. I mean, I made I made some money off of it. We had some exposures, some good things like that. I've heard it's gone to a whole new. I mean. Everyone heard it's gone to a whole new level. Yeah. So how much different is it? Is it really like what everyone says it is where it's just pretty much like a lot more opportunities open up? A lot of people are going to keep coming back for senior years and junior years when they're supposed to go to the NBA? A hundred percent. I think because, you know, like last year, I think it was such like there was a learning curve for sure. Yeah. And so like, you know, people were kind of unsure of what it really meant and, you know, like how to even really do it. And so I think KU took a big step this year. Like they hired some like NIL people and like advisors. Mm -hmm. And so like we have more staff and stuff. And, you know, I mean, like we have the six man or mass strategies. Mass strategies, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I mean, they've started to kind of, you know, take accountability and, you know, kind of push things forward in terms of that. And so we've had a lot of both individual and team things that we've done uh and so it's i mean it's been great this year yeah and i think a lot of people when they look at nil they think about getting these guys paid and it, it is it is partly about that there's no doubt but it also allows people to have like a bigger platform and to like i mean you have jay cole last year who runs a non-for-profit now i think that is going to be more and more common and you have guys like dewan harris and stuff like that who are probably raising money for their communities and doing special things you have you seen a lot of that this year or is it kind of I mean I feel like mass strategies I've seen a lot of stuff posted about stuff like that yeah for sure I mean yeah I, you mentioned J. Cole um I think if he would have been here this year it would have been pushed even more oh yeah and so like I kind of feel bad for him that you know it's just wrong timing for his thing he 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 overstayed his welcome in college basketball for sure <laughs> <laughs> he was here long enough but I mean if he could have had one more extra year of eligibility, you know, eighth, eighth year, I think he oh, would have, yeah. yeah, I think he would have, I mean, I think he would have definitely reaped the benefits of that Yeah. in terms of moving forward. But no, it has been something where we worked at camp in the Bahamas, actually. So the night we mm -hmm. flew in, it was a couple of days before the game. And so like we literally went right to the gym and worked at camp with like local kids. And so it was just really cool to be able yeah. to kind of interact with those kids and, I mean, it was it was a basketball thing, so yeah. kind of you know, show them some stuff. But it was a lot of fun, and I think those opportunities are becoming more and more prevalent. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially with, I mean, I I I didn't honestly know that you guys did that in the Bahamas, and for those kids, that's probably something that they'll never forget ever. Yeah. And so that that obviously like the money's part of it, but those things like that all also help with the experience a lot. Cause that's something I remember we worked a couple different camps like that too and yeah those always you always walk away from those feeling pretty good yeah and i mean it's you don't really get the opportunity to do that like unless you're part of a team like this and so i mean there's probably not a bunch of teams that got to go down there and work a camp and so yeah. and, you know 
meeting and interacting with those kids, it was pretty special. Oh, yeah, for sure. So stepping completely away from basketball, no NIL, no basketball, no nothing. Kansas football this year. I know you, I mean, you've been around, as we said, been around Kansas forever. You were here when they were, they were pretty decent too. Yeah. I did miss the Orange Bowl year. That yeah, was part of the national that. championship year. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, as a kid, I remember going to the KU football games too. And, you know, it was pretty cool. I mean, we're obviously good in basketball those few years that I was here. But I remember the football games were, you know, nothing like my first few years here. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. just, yeah. So, I mean, we had a lot of success on both of those fronts. And so, you know, having the ability in my senior year, especially to come back and have a special year for our football team has been awesome. Yeah. And the energy's back. And I mean, like you said, like the, ener- the, the games before we went on that down decade, yeah. uh, there was, it was so much fun. They were just as, I wouldn't say just as fun as the games in Allen Fieldhouse because Allen Fieldhouse is what it is, but those games were great, sold out crowds, all that. I think the energy's being completely rebooted into the program. And I, that honestly helps the university in Kansas. A ton, yeah, a ton. And so, I mean, like I remember, because my first three years, you know, like none of the students used to go to the games. And so oh, yeah. it, was, it was really cool, you know, kind of going with like our whole team and like a lot of my friends were going to the games. And so it was just such a good atmosphere and, you know, just bringing all the energy back into football. And, I, you know, football is kind of a stepping stone into basketball season. So it kind of gets like all the energy going for basketball season as well. And so we we're obviously very happy for the football team and excited for the bowl game coming up soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, obviously wanted Mizzou. Would yeah. love to see that. <laughs> yep. But Arkansas, we're playing an SEC school. Um, Arkansas is a very good team. And it'll be a good, I feel, a good showing for the University of Kansas in general. Absolutely. And it's going to help. It's going to help the university for the students, for all the athletic programs, just to see us get more national recognition. Absolutely. And so hopefully we can go ahead and take care of Mizzou in and, and the basketball world, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm seeing some stuff on social media about Missouri football not wanting to play us and whatever. So, you know, I mean, we're going to get the chance to play them at least. So yeah, we'll go ahead and try to handle that. But, yeah, it will be great um, just because, I mean, you know, my first three years being here, like we never were even close to having the opportunity. And so – you know, we really had an opportunity to win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we, I mean, it's it's been pretty cool, and you know, people are still excited about it, and so it's just it's been a great thing. Yeah. All right. Well, Jank, appreciate you coming on. Thank you guys for joining this episode. Rock chalk. Rock chalk. <laughs>